Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Echo Knight. In the last one we met the Rockwell children learning more about the background of the game in the process, and now we're in some of the deeper portions of the ship. What should I do? It won't move. If I don't fix it, I too will end up like that person. Hey, are, are you all right in here? You sound like you need some help. I'm dead. Sir William will kill me. Please, God, help me. Well, let's see if we can do anything to help fix this bird. Now, you might remember last part, I removed the cog from the toy raven after we finished using it to distract the one harmful ghost. This is why you need it in order to restore this toy parakeet as well. It moved! Oh, thank God! This is admittedly a circumstance of me knowing the solution to a puzzle ahead of time and then kind of cluing you into it before going further. Uh, the same thing happened back with the drinking puzzle because there was a hint towards Ed's last name in the painting and all that in another room. Do you want it? Do you want it? Go find it! Go find it! Also, yeah, that one plate was completely broken. Oh, shit. Oh, graveyard. Even though it's old, it's very much still a beautiful grave. Something is written. The eminent man who sought the beginning. And on this next grave, the exact same sentence, except with his last breath of life, he cuts open the eternal path. And on this third and final one, infinitely inside the abyss between life and death. And if we check the back of each of these graves, there's a little sigil. Emblem of a tombstone, emblem of a wing carved and engraved on the tombstone, a uh, shape of a fish, as well as an emblem of a tower. The puzzle for this first portion of this whole section, once you enter here, is that you are locked in, plain and simple. And you need to, in a bit of a rush, Figure out the order you need to press the three switches on the one wall in accordance with what the uh, particular... Whoa, frame drops with what the graves said. I believe it is castle, wing, fish. You can barely hear it too. But there is someone else in the graveyard at this point. If you spend too long here, the gravekeeper finds you and I believe you just get kicked out of the vision, period. And you need to come back in. So let's see what's on down here. Now, a few parts ago when I was discussing my origins with the game, where I found it on MU Paradise, something about the name just jumped out at me and I played it, and then I forgot about it promptly for a long time until the Nitro Rad review, I mentioned then that there was one part in that video I went, Oh, it's this game. Welcome to that section. Because this section on fresh playthroughs is probably the most, not intense... But definitely up there. There's a relief with a strange picture carved into it. Hmm. Odd. Guess we can't go that way. Let's go around here. I'll be real. There's just something about this section as well with retrospect now that reminds me of just Persona 1's dungeons. Mind you, it's like Persona 1 in terms of how it approached dungeon design was in older Shin Megami Tensei. Alright, can't go that way. What's down here? Nothing! Who's there? What are you doing here? How did you get inside? Hmm. I prefer not to have any trespassers here. Please leave. The exit's over here. Come. I mean, hey man, I'm basically trapped down here, so sure, thanks for the help. Oh, that's how you open that. It's over here. Yeah, hey, sure thing, man. First off, though, I'd like to grab this flying fish, fish plate because we needed that. In fact, the one in the actual parakeet thing is completely broken, so this will somehow help us. That's a dead lady. Hey, it, it, I'm assuming you're dead. Are you dead? Ma'am? 
And there's no response. Was she murdered? She looks kind of familiar. Did she drop something? A pendant must belong to this lady. Huh. If you check it, there is a description of, like, her and the guy in there. Guy, this is a dead end, too. You don't know how hard it is for me to bait people into here. Today must be my lucky day. For now, I have two souls. Welcome to one of the only few forced, quote-unquote, combat encounters. What? Are you going to run? <laughs> we need to run away from that guy so he don't stab us to death. Along the way, though, once we get into the next section especially, it turns out the Gravekeeper's in line with him and is also chasing us down. You need to use that flying fish plate on the panels, like he did, in order to get our way out of here. <laughs> what are you doing here? There's no one to run. You still belong to William. Oh shit, that's William Rockwell. So, like William himself did, put the plate in, press the button, grab the plates, the door will open and you can proceed. But there is one particular twist on this formula later on in this section. As I believe it's this particular plate. Yes, there's extra text in here that says forward becomes backward, backward becomes forward. Essentially, you're supposed to fumble around doing it wrong the first time. You need to do the puzzle in reverse. Press the button first, then put the plate in and then pick it back up. Make sure you have it in your inventory, because otherwise you need to go through this entire thing all over again. Only, I think they start chasing you when you come down here. But once you get to the door, or the ladder, you're out of there. On a first playthrough, that's probably the most intense chase section in the game, because it's an actual chase section. But on repeat playthroughs, it's like replaying Resident Evil 2 with Mr. X, be it the remake or otherwise, or Resident Evil 3. Yeah, you know you're in imminent danger, and there's that anxiety of being chased. But it's nowhere near as intense. And with that, we can now enter this room, the pump room for the pool, since we need to drain it. Why do we need to enter that other room first? Well... <laughs> it's time to help her out like we did Claudia. I believe this belongs to you. My pendant. Our lost memories. And with that, we've helped another violent ghost pass on. Hell yeah. But now we need to drain the pool. And unfortunately, the instructions are a little messed up. Must be the instructions for the pumps. Words are blurred and difficult to discern. Turn small valve, turn large valve, and then you can't tell the other things apart. Thankfully, since there's only four things you can interact with here, it's more or less just trial and error until you get it right. So we need to turn the small uh, valve, turn the large valve on the top, and then there are two levers we need to pull, I believe. Or is there a lever and a switch? I can't quite recall. No, we have to press the button to turn on the actual radiator, and then pull the lever to finish the puzzle. And this drains the pool on top of us. Now we can head back upstairs and go put the fish eye crystal thing that we got into its little hole. Now, I should note, uh, I mentioned that the ghosts do semi-roam, like the actual enemy ghosts, if you're in a dark room for too long. Uh, there are also certain scripted encounters I'm not showing off, like there was a dead end I could have gone into, I think, the last part, where the ghost lady will just show up and fire smaller little beams of ghostliness at you. And you can get possessed there, but again, if you know they're there, or if you're being more direct in your exploration... You're likely not going to encounter them as much. And by complete coincidence, it's midnight. So let's place this eye in where it's supposed to be like that guy said last part. That worked out far too well in my favor. I'll tell you about the red stone. I know everything. It was written in that book. Welcome to the library! Something's written, the library will be closed due to cleaning. Oh, that sucks. Oh, uh, well. I'm gonna go anyway. Excuse me. Are you blind? Didn't you read that sign over there? 
We're closed for today. Come back tomorrow. But something tells me I need to go past you. I know exactly the way. Dun, 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 this worked for some reason. What the hell? I remember trying so hard to think of some other way to distract her in my first playthrough, but you just need to do the dumbest shit to get past her. That's hilarious. I thought only employees are allowed back here today. Well, I suppose you're okay since you passed the reception area. Anyway, just don't interfere with our job. Alright. Sure thing. Hi. Why are you here? Didn't you pass the reception area? We're closed for today. Ah, whatever. Just don't interfere with our job. Can I help you? Eh, I think. Because this book here looks pretty important. Hey, you! What are you doing? Don't touch those books! Damn it, can't you see we're trying to organize this place? Excuse me? Jeez. Excuse me! Don't touch those books! Everything will get messed up! Ah, fine, fine. What's going on over on this bulletin board? Something's written. Books are a public investment. Please return them on time. Yeah, do that, people! Fund your libraries! Alright, so, bottom line, what you're supposed to do here, you actually need that book in the bin he was looking at. But, this guy will move to the nearest bin you investigate if you're within his relative eye shot. So you can directly guide him out of sight from the initial book we need, and then he can't yell at you for trying to grab it, and, well, you, you, can, you can get it. There are a couple of background details like this that I am not showing off in terms of getting the puzzle solutions, like I mentioned before. There's just outright a uh, scrawling on a table in one of the other rooms in the residential area near the bar that you're supposed to get for the hint for how to solve that puzzle for Ed's drink combination. And there's also another piece of a room I forget to investigate later on that gives me hints towards another puzzle solution. I'm just doing what I know because I know how to play the puzzles more or less. We did get that book though, so let's see what's inside the old book. Legend of Fate and Two Stones. Here for two. Heretofore, I have always believed that every human was born with a destiny. Our fate was ordained. I have here a very interesting legend. It speaks of two stones that can change one's destiny. The red stone was said to be a container that held the power to change destiny. The holder of the stone could mold destiny to their liking by sacrificing the lives of people. Once the holder of the stone obtains its power, they have the ability to rule kingdoms and obtain great wealth. The legend speaks little of the blue stone. The blue stone is said to exist as the opposite of the red stone. The legend also mentions a few rules in, to follow in order to maintain a strong destiny. One of the rules is to not sacrifice too many lives to the red stone. Another of the rules is to never to combine the blue stone with the red stone. It is unknown what fate will bring upon us when these rules are broken. There's not a single mention of its <laughs> aftermath. Well, that certainly explains why William's been killing so many people with that red stone. And based on what we saw last part, it looks like that's been in the family for generations with all the murder. But we already have a blue stone, but it looks like it's torn in half for some reason. Hmm. Clearly there's a lot going in that we're just not being clued in on yet. Oh, well. Also, I did do a bit of a jump cut there. We're back near Arthur and Hilda. That was only like about a minute I took out there, but I figured... It's just to keep the pace up, keep cut out that one little bit there, because otherwise there's not too much I can really cut out in this LP. There are only two more left. Here, use this key. Like, realistically, the only things I can regularly Please. edit out, outside of taking out load times, which I realized I probably shouldn't do just for flow reasons, is the gambling and the rare bigger backtrack and some of those are important anyway because they show you where you need to go next but because we now have two of the four plates we got the kitchen key and that allows us to open this door over here next to the dining hall no there is a save phone in this particular room though room though i don't think it shows up in here while i'm in here on screen at least uh, it's in here i just don't show it on screen Oh, wait, there it was, maybe. Ah, eh, there it is. Never mind, I'm wrong. Howdy there. How you doing? My crew is down there.
They haven't even realized that they've already died. I can't leave them behind. You can use that elevator to go down there. Please. Save them. Those guys. They're already dead. I'll see what I can do for you, man. With that said, going down on a dumb waiter. Definitely a little bit cramped down here. Oh, God, my back. At least it was a relatively quick trip. All right, welcome to, I guess, the crew mess hall. That doesn't look foreboding at all. Oh no, it's that thing I said it might be. Welcome our third major evil ghost, the king from the flashback last part. Unlike the other two though, his ability is to pull you towards him. And he hurts a lot if he's not instant kill and he's getting really close and there's not really a way out of this for me, is there? Oh dear God, oh Jesus, oh no. Uh, hey there. How you doing? Please don't. Uh, yeah, I can't think of a way out of this. Ah, shit. So you've come all this way. My soul has been uneasy ever since I sent you that letter. I'm no longer the same person I was when I first met that girl. The Red Stone. William, what have I come this far for? What, no love, daddy dearest? Dear God. With that, though, uh, something I didn't realize in my first playthrough, they imply it very subtly back when in, like, part two, but when we first encounter the little girl ghosts just outside of the captain's quarters near the bridge, our father is the one who turns on the lights and tell us, tells us how to avoid the ghosts all the way back then. There are demons lurking about here. You best leave. I wonder what he's doing. I wish he'd come here quick. Why doesn't he come? Someone's late on their shift? Oh, that's just the most annoying shit. <laughs> With that said, there's also something you may be noticing as a pattern thus far. Dead bodies we've seen in flashbacks might be related to the ghosts that are trying to kill us. It appears that red stone has some mysterious powers indeed. Howdy. Ships are AB-23. The general radio is... BA-13. No. BA-01. It's useless. I won't be able to remember this. You're late to your shift because you can't figure out your study materials. Guy, I think the best way to get him out there is just to take those from him. But obviously the ghost won't immediately respond to us, so let's see if we can just make him stand up for a moment. Let's wind the clock over to the shift change, perhaps. Shut up! I agree, that is very loud, ugh. Still, uh, those notes, those, those are mine now. Plus, these might come in handy. Let's see what they say. Instructions for the telegraph. When using the telegraph, it is imperative to use the correct channels. Refer to the list. List of applied channels. Double A double O to double A O three ships one. Double A one O to double A twenty three ships two. A B double O to A B twenty three ships three. B A double O to B A O three ships four. B A double one to B A twenty three general one. B B double O to double B twenty three general two. 
The use of the channel BA10 is strictly prohibited, except in case of an emergency. Hmm. That means I'm probably going to need to do that later on, doesn't it? So now your study materials are gone. What now, bruh? Where did the documents go? Oh no, I forgot. My patrol, I have to go. I can't tell if back when I recorded this, I accidentally hit the X button and proceeded the dialogue, or if the dialogue just cut off weirdly there. Which is very possible, because admittedly, emulators are getting very close to complete console accuracy in a lot of cases, but sometimes there's just always going to be those very minor problems that are hard to work out. What were you doing? That demon could show up any time. I'm sorry. The telegraph. I'm going to get some rest now. When is the light going to turn on? And I should note, you can play this game nowadays without an emulator as long as you have a PS3, Vita, PSP, or PSTV. Because this game is available on the PlayStation Network for those consoles for like six or seven bucks, I think. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part seven, we're going to be further exploring the crew deck levels of the ship and seeing what else we can find down here that could help us get towards our goal. See you guys then.